Welcome to Venus, Mercury, and the dishonesty of James Mann. Dedicated to a certain James Mann, or we might call him James, not that manly, Mann. This is relating to James's video, uploaded on August 28th, focusing on Venus as a flat Earth proof. That video, of course, can be quite easily debunked. All we need is a diagram showing the orbits of the three innermost planets. So without further ado, let's go. Now this here is the Sun. And these green rings here are the orbits of Mercury and Venus around the Sun. And lastly, of course, this blue ring is the Earth on its orbit. Now these here are two observation lines starting from the night side of the Earth. And as we can see, the observation lines divide the orbits of Mercury and Venus into red inner parts and green outer parts. Now let's go into what these colors mean. The red parts show where the visibility to Venus and Mercury is blocked by the Earth. Whereas the green parts show where the visibility is not blocked. And Venus and Mercury can be visible. As we can see, most of the orbits of Venus and Mercury are green, denoting visibility from the Earth. And thus, with this diagram, we have proven visibility from the night side of the Earth to both Venus and Mercury. Quod erat demonstratum. Note. This is accurate enough for all intents and purposes. At least it shows that one cannot just assume that the observations of Venus do not work like Mr. Mann did. Mr. Mann, after all, didn't present us with any mathematics, any diagrams, or anything at all. He just assumed, he assumed the observation of Venus should not be possible. What this means is the onus is now on Mr. Mann to show why he thinks the visibility of Venus would be impossible on the globe. But note Mr. Mann, only video responses are accepted following your rules. Any comments you might leave will be ignored. Now here is a predictive remark. Flat Earthers will bitch about the scale of the Earth and the Sun in this picture. Now this pitch point is irrelevant, as the next slide shall show. So here on this slide, we have the Earth and the Sun scaled down to a more, let's say, appropriate size. 
did the scaling down change anything essential about the argument? Well, gee, golly, whiz. No. And nothing essential would be changed. Even if we scaled the Earth and the Sun down even further. Now, of course, there are details worth considering when making this kind of a diagram. Let's say the orbits of Mercury, Venus, and the Earth in relation to each other and their respective distances from the Sun. Now, Mercury happens to be roughly 50 million kilometers from the Sun. Venus would be roughly 100 million kilometers from the Sun, and the Earth 150 million kilometers from the Sun, roughly speaking. Now, as you can see, I actually took that into account. The orbit of Venus is roughly speaking twice that of Mercury in this picture. And again, the distance from the orbit of Venus to the orbit of the Earth is roughly speaking the same as the orbit of Mercury is. So basically, I took the orbit of Mercury to be 50 million kilometers, and then I used that as a scale and a ruler. There are some inaccuracies because, for example, the orbit of Mercury actually varies quite a lot. Does it vary enough to make a change? Well, again, no. So, if you care to look into it, by all means, go and check this for yourself. See if this diagram is accurate. If you do, you will find that it is accurate. Accurate enough. You will find the globe model verified and the bullshit argument from Venus and Mercury for the flat Earth debunked. Now, that is it, folks. James Mann debunked on a video. Now it is just down to let's wait and see until the crying and hypocrisy starts. So that's it for now. See you later, guys and have a good one. Cheers.